Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is a special memorial. Uh, today is the memorial of St. Therese of the Child Jesus, otherwise known as St. Therese Little Flower. If you were to be in her native France, you would probably call her St. Therese of Lisieux. And uh, this is a very special uh, memorial for those of us who are uh, at St. Therese Parish. And for us, it's a feast because she is our patron saint. So uh, I would encourage you to take a look at this wonderful saint um, and uh, to really get to know her because she is an amazing young woman of God who died at a very young age but made a huge impact in the church. In fact, uh, being named as a doctor of the church, even though she passed away at a very young age, God really revealed to her some amazing insights theologically, and uh, she then has been able to pass these on in very effective ways in the church. And so uh, I would just encourage you to get to know uh, St. Therese and uh, the wonderful gift that she is in the church. And there's a, a great biography. If you want to take some time and really read a wonderful story, uh, her biography, The Story of a Soul, is an amazing read. I would just encourage you to read that. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The 72 disciples returned rejoicing and said to Jesus, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have observed Satan falling like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. At that very moment, he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to be my by Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Turning to the disciples in private, he said, Blessed are the eyes to see what you see. For I say to you, many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a, a couple of really amazing and great things for us to camp on here in this passage. I think uh, one of the ones is at the very end, and it's, uh, I say to you, many prophets and kings desired to see what you see but did not see it, and hear what you hear but did not hear it. And think of the hundreds upon hundreds of years, uh, 800 years uh, since the time of Isaiah before the Messiah came. And hundreds of years even before that for some of the other prophets. And so for centuries, the old covenant Israel was longing for the Messiah they had heard about. They longed to see the Messiah. There were prophets that spoke about it like Isaiah in such great detail, but he himself never saw it and saw the coming that is. And again, kings that ruled and desired more than anything else to be the one to behold the Messiah that God sends to be the deliverer of the world. But none of that happened until the time of Jesus. And so those 72 that went out, what he's really marking for them is the fact that they are a part of something magnificent in human history. They are a part 
of the unveiling of the Son of God who was coming into the, coming into the world to save sinners. And that what they have done in this ministry has been a part of preparing the world for his coming. And so blessed are the eyes to see what you see. You're in an amazing place, a blessed place. And the other thing that I love here is in the middle of talking to the disciples who had come back. And, you know, I, I, I wish that there was a little bit of uh, tonal uh, references that we could uh, have here in terms of how Jesus uh, spoke to them. Because I could almost he hear it being said, Jesus roared in laughter. I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. He wouldn't have just said that in a deadpan way. It had to have been something more than that. But in the midst of talking to them, all of a sudden, he begins to pray. And at the moment that he was talking with them, all of a sudden he rejoices in the Holy Spirit and says, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. So in the midst of talking to the people around him, he also is just interrupts and talks with the Lord. I love this because it really helps to set the tone for how we live our lives. Yes, we are in the world. Yes, there are people around us. But guess what? God is close. God is at hand. And you can talk to him just as quickly and as easily as you can talking to other people. Jesus in this particular passage was not using a litany or a written down prayer. He was speaking from his heart to God and sharing with God what was in his heart and what he wanted to share with the Father. How good it is when we can do the same thing, when we can go to the Lord and share those things that are on our hearts as well. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, again, this is a wonderful feast day for St. Therese. Uh, our feast day for our patronal saint here at St. Therese Parish. And uh, for all of us, a wonderful saint who gifted us with an understanding of the little way to love. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.